and giving us a little singular lesson is the news publisher's founder and managing director, Fiona Naniakara. But before we get into the show, here's a little sneak peek into her life. Bang. Um, dude, Palayang, get out of here. Varen, come, come over. Ado, uh, Pal, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ane, oh, Ane is just Ane. <laughs> um, um, I think Ane is just Ane on its own. Uh, Siravata, seriously. Pisu, crazy. Mm. Ayo Sali, oh damn. Ayo, oh. Welcome to Living Gets Real, Fiona. It's good to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. Fiona, now you've made a name for yourself in the comms industry. Um, but to the viewers who out there who don't know too much about you, how would you describe yourself? A human, you know, like a person who can, de who a person who anyone can relate to, because you know, I didn't just land here. You know, I've also worked my way up. So, a human. Human. <laughs> um, just so cut and dry. <laughs> okay, so let's say now you worked with various different industries, right? Would you say that you have a particular industry you found very difficult to deal with? Um, all industries are interesting, um, but. I would say the manufacturing industry was a bit tough because um, you're dealing with a lot of engineers and um, sometimes they need a manual <laughs> to, you know, to, uh, to get it. <laughs> so other than that, um, every industry has been quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about your book, right? Um, how did that come to be? What made you take up the idea? So I was actually telling these stories, um, like stories that happen in the workplace, right, and to my friends. And they were laughing about it and they were like, oh my God, you know, Fiona, you need to blog about it. And I said, uh, no, I mean, what am I going to do blogging about, you know, stories that happen at work, right? Yes, it would be funny, but then in, it's just not good enough content. Mm -hmm. Then I was using these, you know, tools that I was actually uh, using to overcome workplace harassment when I was dealing with it. But I had no idea that it was workplace harassment when I was dealing with it. I was just, you know, um, working things professionally mm -hmm. or, you know, trying to get things done professionally. But I helped a few people and then I realized, okay, now I have a few tools that work, right? Okay. So then I made the made it a self-help book so that people can go to it and get some help instead of, you know, just having some, you know, workplace harassment stories. So that's how Bully and Co happened. Would you say, what, was there ever a negative impact of doing your stories when you released the book? No, actually not to my face. <laughs> <laughs> Four years after I found um, no, people talking about it. But it's mainly the bullies, so it's okay. So I'm not really worried about it. But uh, the feedback overall has been crazy positive, right? Like sometimes I go back to the book when I do presentations for certain officers and you know, uh, for certain seminars. And I judge myself like, you know, it could be better mm -hmm. or it could be sounding a bit more mature because I was rather young when I wrote it. But the feedback overall has not been negative, you know, and people have, so many people have found out that they've been harassed and um, and that was one of the major eye-openers of the book, you know. So even though I thought the third section of the book, which is the toolbox, is the most helpful part, um, later I found out that a lot of people didn't know that they were being harassed. So the stories actually helped them to understand, okay, this is not a professional way to do things. Okay. What do you think makes a good PR professional in today's world? A good PR professional is someone who thinks of everyone, you know, because we are, uh, on a regular basis, we are working with a lot of stakeholders. And not only that, we are also working with the mass media who are communicating to a, a mass audience, right, so the general public. So, literally everyone, right, so we have to think about everyone. So, even when we get a client, um, we can't always just think about a client, we have to 
think we have to filter it from I and to see if it's newsworthy. Is it reader friendly? Is it helping the editor, you know, get uh, their content across? So we have to think about a lot of people, not just the brand, just because we want money. <laughs> Fiona, like you've been your own boss for a while now. How did that happen? How did that transition start from? Oh, it's a long journey. Uh, so it started 15 years ago and I was uh, in an advertising agency in PR. Um, it was great, you know, it, we learned everything, you know, from account management to media. You know, that's basically where I got my bread, bread and butter. So some of the contacts are still from, you know, back in the day and we still keep in touch. So we've basically grown together, right? So. So even when I was quitting corporate, it was like, you know, speaking to my father over and over again with the editors because it's like, I sure Fiona, you know, and you know, you won't get sick leave, you won't have bonus, you won't have agreements. I'm like, yes, yes, you know, because we've grown together. That's our relationship as a PR person and, you know, mm -hmm. the industry that we work with, right? So it's good to know that they genuinely have my back because after operating alone and uh, running my business for three years and they've always had my back, you know, even without the big budgets that I used to have working in corporate. So it's really good to know. So my journey started off in agency life and then I moved on to media. Uh, then I was also a part of ITN, which was the, the biggest TV station at the time and then it was a really good case study for me because I was also doing my master's so mm -hmm. and, and my boss was actually helping me out with a lot of information like raw data and it was really interesting it was actually educational right mm -hmm. <laughs> then I moved on to healthcare um, again it's really good for um, a person to know it's it's really good general knowledge you know it's to understand you know where to go to what doctor to go to you know the facilities of a hospital it's 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 very interesting mm -hmm. and also working with doctors was also very interesting because you know the side that they see is very different to the side that we do um, then I moved on to manufacturing and it was a multinational so that's where I actually got my you know the global knowledge and know-how to strategize in terms of crisis communication, handling mergers, acquisitions, you know, the big, big guns, right? So it was very interesting. We, I was also exposed to, you know, getting to know community work, CSR, environment, sustainability reporting. So it was really good, you know. Then I moved on to telco. telco. So even though it's telco, I would consider it as my technology background, mm -hmm. like the technology background, because Honestly, before that, uh, the concept of an agency was this nice building, having a creative department, having the, you know, the media girls calling up, you know, that was my idea of an agency, right? Okay. But then when I moved into uh, tech, I realized we've been working the same way for 30 years, you know, the industry is around 30 years old in Sri Lanka and we've been working this the same way. And then I thought about my strengths, you know, as a PR person, I have a background of media, um, PR agency and also a client's perspective, you know, how can I deliver, how can I, th basically, how can I think about all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. right, you know, how can I produce something which will help all three stakeholders. So I thought of a press release website, you know, where okay. I put all the press releases in a website and then the editors go and download it, but it's not going to happen because they receive around 100 emails a day and it's not realistic mm -hmm. right then i thought okay you know what how hard is it you know just to put the database in and then sync it in and it just gets you know distributed you know from a tech standpoint it's not a big deal at all but from an industry standpoint you know since there were no innovations done for 30 it years makes it, easier for them well. it makes it easier cheaper faster efficient all the things all the things better right because one um, once we sync in the database into the site it is just a matter of anyone you know any entrepreneur a small business owner anyone can just prepare their press release and then upload it onto the site and it gets distributed right normally what happens is people take around 20 minutes to distribute this via email because they personalize the email to each person and with the system it's cut down to 60 seconds so from 20 minutes to one minute right so it's much faster and also because we don't have a human sitting there um, distributing these emails we can just give it at a really low cost right so it's efficient it's cost efficient as well so which means 
um, small business owners, entrepreneurs, they have the opportunity now to appear in the newspaper and fight with the big guys, not with the people who have big budgets. Mm. So the reason for that is because I've been working in big companies with big budgets, right? And sometimes we don't have news, but I have a KPI and I have a budget. Right, so we we draft a contract with a, an agency, and then even though even if I have news or not, I'm content giving is still it, content out. is still going out. And what you read as a reader is my KPI, okay. you know. So it is really sad for the national newspaper and the readers, right? So it was, um, it. It, it is to actually serve multiple stakeholders. So you get better content, the readers get better content, editors get better content because small business owners and entrepreneurs come up with innovative ideas to stay ahead of the game because you know they need to compete with the big guys anyway. They're sharing the same market share, right? So, so it, it makes it easier for you know entrepreneurs also to appear in the newspaper. Um, all in all, even for multinational companies, you know, now like the big guys can also come into come on board because majority of them they have in-house, like you know, writing and all mm -hmm. that. So it's just a matter of uploading it, and you know, it's just distributed. What about the monitoring? Does that happen? No, monitoring happens separately. So I've only automated a certain area okay. because even that is tough, right? <laughs> even as it is, it's tough because people still, even the. I'll tell you, I can't mention name, but one of the biggest tech companies in the country, they come, they came on board because it's the distribution system is obviously efficient and it's cost efficient also. So, but the thing is, they don't want to get the membership. They want us to do the distribution. Okay, so they're just coming every time they need something. Right? Yes, okay. so they, they prefer to send that email and where we use the distribution system, right? So, and they're a tech company. So even like, you know, it's so much easier. So the whole reason for us to implement that is, to, you know, eliminate another human being or a PR person doing monotonous work, right? Because we are in the creative industry. So we have to think creatively. If, here, if we are sitting and distributing emails or just, you know, doing monotonous work, you know, we are, we are going to kill our creative brain. Yeah. So the whole point of it was also to not just to automate, um, but also so that, you know, the humans can be used for better things. Okay. <laughs> now in PR, you get to share good news, but there are also times when you have to handle crisis management. Has there ever been a story where you can share with us something? Yeah. Oh my God, I have so many. Um, so I worked in a multinational company, which helped me a lot because, you know, I had a, a group company also backing me up and two legal teams, right? So, but also having said that, not only that I don't have complete freedom, any, any wrong little, any wrong tiny mistake could go a long way mm -hmm. and 90 countries could be impacted, right? Mm -hmm. So, so crisis communication is very tricky. You need to think of the bigger picture at all times, right? With my experience, I've seen even as PR people, we always want to do something. Right, you know, as soon as you give the agency, hey, listen, you know, this has happened. The first thing they do is let's draft a statement. Yes, it's good to be, you know, proactive and draft a statement. But sometimes, majority of the times, keeping silent has also worked. Okay. Right, because um, the people who are spread. So I've been lucky because the company that I've worked for was uh, ethical. Uh, we had nothing wrong. So it was just a media. It was just a communication, crisis communication situation. It was not a crisis situation, mm -hmm. right? So because of that, I was able to manage it fairly and also with facts, mm -hmm. you know, because we had all the information ready. Um, but having said that, sometimes keeping quiet is something that many PR professionals don't know, right? So it's, it's important that you analyze uh, the whole situation and understand the bigger picture. So as an example, I'll tell you uh, one time I had the group CEO coming in for a press conference and I had an argument with my boss, right? My uh, local CEO said, we are going to have a press briefing, we are not going to get everyone here, right? Because some of the press have not been very professional in terms of reporting. So I said, that doesn't happen, you know? Like we don't have press briefings, you know? We have press conference, we have everyone, you know? We can't limit, you know? We can't just limit uh, the press coming into a press conference. Then he sat me down, he's like, Fiona, listen, you know, I don't want one unprofessional guy coming and throwing an egg or, you know, you know, asking a nasty uh, question which is irrelevant to the press conference that we are going to have um, and then cause a riot there and then for the good stations also to pick it up, right? So which made sense, right? So then we made it completely hush-hush, we only uh, 
call in um, a handful of media people and not just biased media people, professional media people overall, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and like he said, he was completely right. You know, it was it was a high security press conference, and I had I went two hours before the press conference to the venue. By that time, we had people planted who were not invited, and also from the person who was trying to ca cause havoc. It was a ex shareholder, and you know, it was a big big story, right? So my boss was right, you know. So then I had to, you know exit them and say, hey, listen, I'll give you the press release. You have access to the information that we are revealing today. However, this is a press briefing and we want to have only... Um, exclusive uh, number. Yeah, exclusive number and the invited people. So we had to limit the hall to make it look like a very tiny room. It wasn't a big hall. Everything was kept in, you know, miniature size, basically, right, to give that message. So I learned my lesson from an engineer. Right, even though he was a CEO, he was, you know, he was an engineer, he was not a PR person, right? So I was the PR person, but so we learn, right? So as PR people, as agency people, sometimes we might think, oh, let's be proactive, let's draft a statement, but being silent and, you know, handling things as professionally as possible is, uh, has worked out for me. <laughs> All right, well, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here with us today. Thank you for joining us on Living Gets Real. Thank you for having me. And that's all we have for you this week. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch the latest episode of Living Gets Real. Thank you for watching and stay safe.